Hey guys, Daryl Kappen here from Wild Men Life, wildmenlife.com, where we help men become bold, wild, confident, and free in their daily walk. Today's lesson is, is entitled, Putting an End to Condemnation Once and for All. And this is a first of six part series of lessons that we're doing that I started in the last lesson, lesson which I gave for an introduction, Being Confident and Free. If you didn't get a chance to watch that lesson, I really recommend that you go back. It's kind of a brief overview of what we're going to be doing over the next six lessons. But we've got a lot to cover today, so let's get started. First of all, what I'm going to do is I want to read to you the scripture, Romans 8, verses 1 to 4. And all the scriptures that I'm quoting today are from the New Living Translation, if you want to follow along. So Romans 8, 1 to 4, reads as so. So, now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have, And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. As we discussed in the last lesson, we talked about the fact that Romans 8 starts with no condemnation in verse 1 and ends with nothing can separate us from the love of God in verse 39. Now, if the enemy can plant seeds of condemnation into our heart and minds, what happens is is that he also plants a seed that we have lost God's favor, we've lost God's blessing in our life, and makes us start to second guess whether God loves us. When this happens, we trade our grace that God has given us that said no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus, we trade that for a works-based mindset. It's no wonder that the enemy tries to get us to into condemnation, because I believe it's one of the biggest tools of the enemy to uh, make us ineffective in our walk with the Lord. So let's talk about what a works-based mindset is, bringing back the law. I'm going to read uh, a couple verses to you here, in uh, verses Uh, three and four. Let me read these to you. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies that we sinners have. And in that body, God declares an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Here's another verse from Romans 7, 4 and 6. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died to Christ. And now you are united united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. When we were controlled by our sinful nature, our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us, and the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds, resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law, for we died to it, and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. So why does the enemy want us to be in condemnation? I believe that there's three C's that the enemy tries to bring to us. He brings condemnation and he brings confusion and he brings control. I'm going to put some things up here on the screen here that I really believe are important for you to see. Satan wants us to think that you are no longer qualified to be a spiritual leader, which is condemnation. He wants you to think that you're not worthy of God's love, which is confusion. And he wants you to think that you have to work to gain God's love, which is control. Works bring self-righteousness and a judgmental spirit. We think we need to measure our spiritual life. A grace-filled life is a life with no measurements. 
here's an interesting thing. I had uh, one time, I had somebody tell me, they said, um, do you love God? And I said, well, sure, I love God. Well, then they asked me a second question. They said, well, how much do you love God? Well, when you think about that question, instantly condemnation comes in mind because you start looking at how do you measure how much you love God? And, and the only way you can measure how much you love God, if you do that, is to measure yourself against somebody else. So I start looking at my wife. Well, she probably loves God more than I do, so my love isn't as good as it should be. Or I might look at, uh, you know, Joe Blow down the street that never goes to church, and I think, well, I go to church. Must be uh, I, I love God more than he does because I go to church. But God never wanted us to live a life of measurements. It's, you know, it's tricky in the world that we live in. Everything that we do is about measurements. Okay, how much do you weigh? How tall are you? How old are you? How long have you worked at this job? How long have you been married? All these things, if you look around, everything, you know, it's Sunday, it's Monday, it's Tuesday, it's Wednesday, it's all, it's all a, a pattern of measurements. And, and it's so easy to get trapped back into that workspace mindset where you feel like you have to figure out how much you love God and how much you, God loves you by you know, what you do for him and how you serve him. And God never meant for us to live a measured life. He wants us to be a life that is free from measurements. And the only way that you can do that is to live in grace. And what grace says is how much does God love you? Now that is an unmeasurable quantity and you can spend your whole time looking at how much does God love me and recognize that it is a totally a life of measurements. So let me read uh, some other things. You know, what, what does God want us? How does God want us to, um, to live our life in this life of grace? Let me uh, put some things up on the screen here for you to look at. God, Jesus took our sin to the cross and was condemned for our sins so we didn't have to, which is Colossians 2, 1 to 14. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Here's another point. God saved us by his grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. This is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so that none of us can boast about it. Going back again, our salvation experience was by grace. It wasn't by law. It wasn't by measurements. It was all about by grace. The importance of belonging to Jesus Christ, the promise of no condemnation is extended only to those who are his kids. So first thing I need to ask you when we're thinking about this is, first of all, no condemnation is a promise to those who belong to Christ Jesus. So I need to ask you, first of all, before we do anything, do you belong to Christ Jesus? Have you made a stand? Have you made a decision where you want Jesus to be the Lord of your life. If you have not done that, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your life is going to be full of condemnation that you can't get free of because the only way you can be free of condemnation is if you have Jesus in your heart. So if we take the time right now, and if you haven't done this, here's the simple prayer that you need to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross and that you paid for my sins. I confess to you that I'm a sinner and I ask you to become the Lord of my life and to come into my heart and permanently become my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you do that, now you are a child of God. And guess what? You can be totally free from condemnation. That can no longer affect your life and no longer hold you bound um, from Satan's tactics of bringing condemnation into your life. Jesus paid for your sins once for all time. Let me put this verse up for you up on the screen. Hebrews 10 verses 8 to 10. First, Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burn offerings or other offerings for sin. No, nor were you pleased with them, though they are required by the law of Moses. Then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second 
covenant into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by his sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all sin, once for all time. So, if he paid for our sins once for all time, well, then why do we need to confess our sins? I mean, if they're all paid for, why do we confess our sins? Well, let me read you this passage of Scripture. This is from Romans 6, verses 1 to 4. Well, then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by, baptize, by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also live new lives. Okay, so I love what our pastor said um, in one of the messages that he just recently did. He says, I am free to live a life that is free of sin because I have been bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus and, and all my sins have been paid for, but I'm still a human being and there's still opportunities for sin to come into my life. Now you don't just ignore that because it's all been paid for, but you need to confess that sin and you need to ask God to forgive you for it. I call it recalibrating. You need to recalibrate and get yourself back on course. We just went on a trip a couple weeks ago, and uh, it was really funny. Um, I was driving down the road, and um, I wanted to go one direction, but my navigation system was taking me another one. Basically, I wanted to go around Chicago instead of going through downtown Chicago. Well, my navigation was taking me through downtown Chicago, and I missed one corner, and I realized what was happening. So I just decided to ignore the navigation system and turn and head down on, on I-194. Now what happened was, is my system said recalibrating and it put me back on a new course that took me down around through Chicago. And I, I really believe confession of our sins is basically recalibrating our course. The enemy is trying to get us to go through downtown Chicago. Downtown Chicago is not fun. All kinds of roadblocks, all kinds of problems, but God has a better course, a better path for us to take. And we may have been on his course, but then realized that something happened in our lives, basically sin, that got us off course. So our confession of our sin is just basically recalibrating and getting us back on course so that God can show us the direction that he wants us to go. I'm going to put these up on the screen for you. These are what I call God's three C's, which are correction, conviction, and confession. God uses his word to bring instruction and correction. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Basically the recalibration I was telling you about. The Holy Spirit brings conviction showing us a need for change. John 16, 8. And when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will convict the world of sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. And then what we talked about, confession, if we confess and change our course of direction as God leads us, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He sees us through the blood of his son. Ephesians 1 7. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Here's another part. He doesn't condemn you, so why should you? Romans 8 1. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. God wants us to walk in freedom. He does not want us to be in condemnation. He doesn't want us to be in a situation where we're walking in unconfessed sin. Unconfessed sin basically keeps you going on the wrong course, keeps you going on the wrong direction. And what happens is, is that you open the enemy, you open the opportunity for the enemy to take you off course of what God's true purpose and plan was. Now, if we sin, 
we're not judged for that sin, but God convicts us, he, he corrects us, he convicts us, and he asks us to confess that sin so that we can get back on course. I've got a few more verses. This is where I'm going to end, okay? I really believe it's important that we have to renew our mind. We have to be out with the old and in with the new. Romans 12, 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you, transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Leviticus 26.10 is really interesting. This is an Old Testament law. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you have to move it out and make room for the new. I love that verse because, you know, in order to make room for the new mindset, you have to get rid of the old mindset. You have to move it out. You have to recognize every day, I keep condemning myself. I keep feeling like I'm a failure. I keep feeling like I'm not worthy to be a spiritual leader of the home. I, I keep feeling like my wife doesn't recognize me as a spiritual leader. I, I keep feeling like God's mad at me. All those things are old mindsets that we've got to move out, guys. We've got to get rid of them once and for all. And we have to bring in the new mindset, which God says he's transforming us by the renewing of our mind. So it's really important that you push out the old and replace it with the new. Maybe what you have to do is memorize Romans 8.1. And every time you start thinking of this old mindset of something that brings condemnation to your life, stop and say, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, period, end of story. You've got to put to death condemnation once and for all. That's where the period ends. That's the end of the story as we talked in the last lesson. So that's it, guys. We're going to push this out once and for all. There is no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. Those of you who have just accepted the Lord, I want you to put it in the, in the comment screen down below and let me know that you made that decision for Christ. If you decided to put away condemnation once and for all, I want you to go down in the comment section of this video and I want you to say, no condemnation. I want you to put hashtag no condemnation in the comment section so that I can see that you made a decision that once and for all, we're gonna put to death the spirit of condemnation is no longer having control over us. My name is Darrell Kappen. I'm from Wild Men Life, wildmenlife.com. Hey, make sure that you share and subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, and make sure that you share this and like this. Share it with other men. Trust me, there's a lot of men out there that I know that need to hear this message because they've been walking for years and years and years in condemnation. Let's get rid of it once and for all, okay? Wildmenlife.com, here helping men become bold, wild, confident, and free. Thanks so much, guys. See ya.